purpose of this video here today is just to bestow a little bit of a trick uh, upon you guys and girls watching this, particularly those of you who are starting your ownership uh, or should I say apprenticeship in the Land Rover sphere. Now, removing a front differential from a Land Rover can be a very uh, tiresome task and it can be even worse if you're doing it on the Japanese counterparts because the reason being is they have less nuts and bolts so they're harder to actually pull apart. Now, why would we want to remove just a differential and not use it as an opportunity to actually overhaul the left and right side swivel hub housings? Well, many of us will find that we'll have the misfortune, as I have today, of redoing the swivel hub housings at a pretty recent date. And therefore, when a issue with your front differential arises, you don't really want to be taking apart all the hard work that you've put in to getting the preloads on the Ryko bushes and the, the pinion bearings and all the other whiz-bang stuff that goes into the swivel hub housings apart again. So what we're actually going to look at is a way of being able to remove those and be able to install them again with relative ease but get the differential out. Now, the reason why I'm taking my differential out of the Series 3 Land Rover here today is I've had the misfortune of the actual airline that runs from the diff housing to the actual locking differential itself. And no, this isn't the differential out of the Series 3. Uh, the airline has actually got a leak in it, so I've actually got to replace that. So it's a little bit of a, a, problematic, a problematic pitfall within the design, but... You know, nothing's perfect and they work very well for us and we're very satisfied with them, so it just sort of goes with the territory. But anyway, that's sort of the rationale of this video and we're going to jump over behind the camera, get those spanners twirling, get those sockets spinning and start pulling some stuff apart. <clears throat> Right, so the process is relatively simple. Uh, we need to disconnect a few things, obviously. Uh, the first thing that I like to do is disconnect the hydraulic line uh, for our brakes, and I just simply use a simple brake clamp for that. Uh, we then need to take out our tie rod ends or ball joints, and you can do that with the use of a rattle gun uh, after taking the split pins out, or you can simply just use a three quarter inch uh, spanner and just use your foot and give it a little bit of gusto. Um, the reason why you tend to do that is sometimes uh, they can actually spin and when they start spinning uh, you need a little bit of oomph to actually help the nut to come loose. Uh, when they do start spinning that's usually a good time to replace them because uh, obviously things have gone amiss inside. So once we've done that we've then got a number of uh, bolts or nuts that we have to undo around the actual flange of the swivel hub housing itself. You want to make sure that you leave the top bolt in the actual flange itself just to take the overall weight of the swivel hub. So that's pretty much where we are at the moment. Now there's one thing that you must be careful of and that is there is actually a seal in the actual axle housing itself. Now Pulling this out can be a little bit cumbersome, so you do have to be careful not to score that seal. It's probably the only downside with the entire process, you could say. Particularly with more modern vari variations of the Land Rover, such as the County and 110, along with everything else that follows from that, uh, the, the actual swivel hubs have CVs in them, not universal joints like this one. So they actually carry a molybdenum grease uh, within it. So if you pull this out and you actually score the seal, the molybdenum grease will inadvertently appear in your diff oil, turning it a very silvery black colour. And uh, it's, it's not a good thing. So just have to be a little bit aware of that. But anyway, um, let's give it a go. Let's see if we can actually get this out. Okay. 
and there we are. Now, I've actually kind of cheated, I've already done the other side. But now all we have to do to pull the actual diff out is do the half a dozen nuts off the actual diff itself and then we can pull the diff out. So I'm going to get on to that. Now, as I said, got to be careful of the seal. The only other downside is you've got to bleed your brakes uh, once you've um, done what you need to do here. It is a little bit cumbersome putting it back on. It does help to have a helpful friend or pair of hands around, but it can be done. And it beats having to take your entire swivel hub housing apart, which can take um, quite a long time. And then you've got to preset everything and start again. So I think it's a pretty good, pretty good system. But anyway, I'm going to get on to the differential and hopefully you found this video of use. And if you are enjoying these top tips and a heck of a lot more here at Seriously Series, then, you know, please do jump over onto Patreon and please do support not just myself, but Seriously Series there. It does make a big, big difference and it means we can continue to bring this content to you. Also, if you've found this really, really good, give us a thumbs up down below. It helps Dr. Google and YouTube and all that recognize the video and helps to share it out there with others. Anyway, uh, I'm going to keep, keep on here and I'm doing a few more nuts and bolts and I'll catch you in our next video. See you then.